As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, there were significant disruptions and restrictions in the flow of people and goods worldwide. In particular, landlocked regions that were more reliant on overland border crossings were significantly impacted by the sanitary measures put in place at a global level to limit the spread of COVID-19. The results show that this period resulted in significant transport demand reductions and highlighted the fragility of global supply chains. However, these disruptions were short-lived. They are not projected to have long-term impacts on the growing transport trends in the region. For Asia in particular, this means that despite this COVID-related contraction, there is expected to be significant growth over the coming decades. Given this expected growth in transport activity, it is essential to focus on decarbonization because greenhouse gas emissions are a key contributor to climate change on a global scale. The economic and social impacts of climate change will be felt across national boundaries with increasing transboundary risks because of interconnected and global supply chains, global markets, and natural resource flows. It is therefore imperative for decarbonization to become a global policy priority. To achieve decarbonization, national, regional, and global efforts will be needed. To address the issue of decarbonizing while recovering from the pandemic and fostering economic growth in Asia, we developed a companion series to ITF's flagship publication focusing on three different regions of Asia. The ITF Transport Outlook 2021 analyzed different pathways to decarbonize global transport while recovering from the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Drawing on the models and outputs from that report, we have produced the ITF Transport Outlook Special Issues for Asia, Policy Analysis and implementation. This is particularly challenging exercise to do for Asia. It is a diverse region that spans vast distances and has differing urbanization rates and economic outlooks and energy resources. Improving connectivity to support economic growth is a strategic priority for economies in Asia. There are currently large connectivity gaps in many countries. However, it is important to understand what drives this gap and how increased connectivity can align with environmental aims. Connectivity has different components. There is a transport component that encompasses the efficiency of the system, the quality of the infrastructure, and the operational and policy side. But there is also the geographic and spatial component. Much of the connectivity gap is due to geography. Improvements to infrastructure and the resilience of supply chains are therefore unlikely to entirely overcome the connectivity gaps of more remote regions when compared to regions that are more central. This calls into question the aim of increasing connectivity for the sake of connectivity. Connectivity is important, but in order to have positive human and environmental outcomes, it needs to be aligned with environmental goals and should focus on regionalization. To this end, it is important to design measures that mitigate the rise of transport emissions as demand grows in Asia and connectivity improves. Historically, more connectivity has meant more reliance on carbon. To meet the challenges of decarbonization while simultaneously enhancing the well-being of citizens, will require a change in the paradigm of connectivity. More ambitious policy measures will be required to prevent conflicts with other policy objectives, such as Paris Agreement or the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So, what do we recommend? Improved connectivity should be decoupled from increased carbonization. This means the connectivity improvement should focus on regional connectivity and sustainable growth, linking decarbonization and regional connectivity to develop resilient transport sectors. Improvement should not just focus on infrastructure, but soft measures will also play a large role. To this point, it is imperative 
the cross-border trade facilitation is improved to enhance connectivity through proper policy and planned investment in infrastructure. Finally, to have sustainable supply chains, we need to establish coherent freight reforms for sustainable outcomes. Furthermore, in order to mainstream sustainability, considerations in freight transport planning, gathering and analyzing transport statistics will be crucial, an element that is lacking in the region currently. Gathering data allows us to identify gaps and opportunities while setting feasible targets. Governments need to create a coherent framework of economic and regulatory incentives and penalties to align economic objectives with sustainability goals. Including freight transport emissions in carbon pricing schemes is a critical instrument that policymakers have at their disposal to foster a green transition. I will conclude by saying that we have drawn many lessons from the COVID-19 pandemic. In the context of this panel, one of the most important lessons we learned is that positive policy and operational changes are possible. This can involve streamlining procedures and digitizing processes. Importantly, these changes do not need to be slow. As we continue to improve the connectivity of the region, it is important to keep in mind that growth and sustainability can work together to achieve continuing growth to provide the citizens of Asia with better life outcomes today and in the future.